when we read this Torah in the synagogue, we sing it. And there are little notes that teach us how to sing it so that everybody sings it the same way. There's one note called a shalshalet that only appears four times in the whole of the Old Testament, in the whole of the Chumash. And it appears in our Torah portion this week, which is Pasha Tzav. And it occurs when Moses, in the inauguration of the tabernacle, which we've been reading about, um, he is about to um, confer onto his brother Aaron the priesthood. And he's going to bring an offering and then he's going to give to Aaron the priesthood. That's what happens in this week and that's where the Shalshayat occurs. The other three times it occurs in the Torah are in the case of Abraham's nephew Lot. Abraham's nephew Lot lives in the city of Sodom and he is visited by angels who tell him he has to leave, that the city is going to be destroyed and he has to run away. And unlike his wife, he doesn't look back, but he has a certain hesitancy. He's not quite sure that he wants to leave. He leaves, but he has an emotional response to being told to leave. And he's not so sure that he wants to go. He does go. Second situation where we see the Shalshalis is in the case of Eliezer, who is Abraham's servant. And Abraham tells Eliezer to go find a wife for um, his son, for the son of Abraham and Sarah. They have a son called Isaac who needs a wife. And he sends Eliezer out to find a wife for their son, Isaac. But Eliezer also has a daughter and there's a part of him that's hesitant to go find a wife that's not his daughter. So he's a little bit unsure and a little bit not, not fully in. In the case of Joseph, we see the Shalshelet, Joseph and his amazing Technicolor dream coat. We read about Joseph and he's in the house of Potiphar and the Potiphar's wife comes on to him and tries to seduce him. And in the situation where he's about to like resist and run away and, and not be not succumb to her advances, there's a Shalshelet. There's something about Joseph that isn't fully in running away. And we learn in the Medrash that he sees an image of his father in the window. And that's the final push that he needs to make sure that he doesn't do what, the wrong thing, doesn't succumb to the advances of Potiphar's wife. So in all of the cases, in the case of Lot, in the case of Eliezer, in the case of Joseph, in the case of Moses, we see a certain emotional hesitation, something tumultuous for them in what they're being told to do. They know the right thing. There's not a situation about not knowing. They know what they have to do, but there's a there's some other vested interest or some other reason why it's hard for them to do it. And the shalshelet is an indicator of that emotional turmoil. So in these cases, we can notice in our own situation where we know what the right thing to do is, but we have like other things that we might want, or there's a selfish reason, or there's other reasons, or there's other things that get in the way, and it's not so clear, and we're hesitant, so we should know that in our tradition that that uh, these that, that, that it occurs, that it is something that's part of our humanity, is to maybe know the right thing, but not always do the right thing. And uh, I bless us that, that God should bless us with the clarity, not just the clarity, but the inner resolve to do the right thing, even when we're hesitant.